it's really hard to predict what's uh, down in the subsurface, and that's what the what the geologists uh, are doing. They uh, they can with with certain data like uh, rock data and uh, geophysics, uh, they can predict where you find your uh, your oil or gas filled channel or your reef or your estuary or your beach and uh, you got to drill through those you know otherwise you have a, a dry hole what they call and and you just spent uh, 10 million dollars for nothing so that's why uh, why you're probably better off uh, having a geologist on board than just throwing darts on a map and seeing what happens <laughs> It's been said that uh, we really don't need geologists to find oil and gas. We could just drill at random locations and we'd find about as much oil and gas as they do now with all the science they throw at it. But uh, as oil and gas deposits uh, become exhausted, uh, certainly a, a greater amount of research uh, is essential to find uh, these deposits and of course we're having to go deeper. I developed some techniques to look at rocks in a different way so you could maximize the information out of the rocks to help oil companies find more oil and gas. One classic case, uh, one of the companies drilled a well and uh, it was producing 100 million cubic feet of gas a day. That's a lot of gas. That's, I don't know how many dollars, but it would pay, the $20 million well would pay out probably within a year or two. Um, so they go drill another well and it's dry and then they drill another well and it's just marginally um, productive. Drill like two more and they're marginally productive. So they go, what's going on? We don't know. We've uh, done everything the same, yet one well is huge and the other wells are basically not any good. So I use ARC at that point in time to uh, tell them what's going on with their well and why it's good and what they need to do to find other good ones. ARC is advanced rock characterization and uh, it's a technique that I developed in order to get maximum uh, information out of the rocks to help oil companies drill for gas and oil. We can make hole in two ways. We can either grind the rock uh, through very small uh, chips that are a millimeter big or we can take out a piece of core. You know all the rocks are folded and faulted and beaten up and most of the time when you look at the at the drill chips most people don't see anything about the folding and the faulting. But I was able to tease out all kinds of information that let me know wh what was going on structurally. It's really easy just to go, well, this is a limestone or a sandstone. But to find out what kind of limestone, was it deposited in two feet of water or a hundred feet of water or a thousand feet of water? What were the uh, aerobic conditions? How much oxygen was in there? What was the animal life like? What was the wave energy like? What was the water temperature like? Uh, was it hypersaline or normal salinity? Was it fresh water? You know, all of those questions that have a really big impact on exploration, I was able to tease out information to answer those questions. When I got into that business, um, I had never used a stereo microscope before in any real sense. A client phoned me up. He says, Richard, I've got all these wells. I'd like you to look at these wells. And I said, well, I've never done it before. He says, oh, you'll figure it out. So I rented a cheap microscope and looked at these wells. And as I'm looking at the rocks, at these drill chips, I would ask some of these old timers that had been there for a long time, you know, what's this? What, is, what do you think this is? And some of the stuff I knew, and some of the stuff I was just guessing at. And so I would ask them. And most of the time, they wouldn't know. And they'd been looking at these rocks with stereo microscopes for years. And that's what kind of triggered it, that there's information that's there that's not being gathered. So I pushed the limits of it, bought a $40,000 mic. Everyone else was using $2,000 mics. And, um, and then spent a ton of time trying to figure things out. Some people would look at 100 vials of rock a day. Well, some days I'd look at one, just trying to figure it out because I was trying to get so much information out of it. The real future of Western Canada is found in this rock here. This is a core sleeve with a uh, small core plug taken out of the middle of tar sands. There's enough oil in there to keep uh, Western Canada going and much of the world going for 100 or 150 years. The oil and gas industry really is 
probably the most important industry in the world. If we didn't have it, we wouldn't have cars to drive, we wouldn't have plastics, we wouldn't have warm homes, um, we wouldn't be able to do almost, well, many, many of the things that we do. So I played some little tiny role in uh, heating your home, getting you to work, um, doing all those things. There's many people that do this behind the scenes that don't ever get any credit, sometimes get a bad rap, but work hard to, to take care of everybody.